Well, hi there, I'm Noah Bradley, and this is Handmade House TV. On this week's episode, I wanted to share with you a little bit more about chinking, and in particular, the base of what our chinking should be. So stay tuned. Okay, today I wanted to share with you uh, my insight, my experience with regard to the best base material to use for uh, chinking your log cabin. And there seems to be, uh, there's, there's, there's always plenty of options and most of the time there's, uh, there's poor ones, acceptable ones, and the ones that have proven over time to work. And, and this is the case with uh, the base material for our chinking. Now, uh, historically there is chinking and nogging and the chinking would be the material used to infill the space between the logs and the nogging uh, would be the clay mixture that was smeared over top of those either stones or chips of wood, chunks of wood. Uh, and that would be what we'd do with the log cabin. The, uh, and this did a great job of keeping the animals out, keeping most of the light out. Uh, the problem with this form of chinking with the wood or the uh, or the stone in there is a, a minimal insulation and b the thing uh, it had to be done very frequently that uh, the the mud would wash off and that the stone and the wood chunks don't be a great bonding uh, surface for uh, for any type of chinking material any type of daubing material that you would apply that it would just hold on to the surface of it and then eventually fall off as soon as it got wet or uh, it was exposed to any kind of impact of uh, something bumping into the house. I've seen chunks fall off just by touching a log cabin. Um, and uh, so, uh, and also it, by doing the, uh, the, the chinking of uh, putting those pieces in there, you're also robbing your house of any insulation value that you can't put any insulation between the two layers. Uh, so the modern form of chinking, the, what came about in the 20th century, is basically to apply a thin layer of cement both inside and outside of the log cabin. And I know that some people like permachink, and obviously if you've been following me here on Handmade Houses, you know I'm a big fan of cement, uh, many reasons, and you're welcome to go back through some of my earlier videos to find out why. Uh, but uh, uh, but in order to apply that thin layer of cement and in order for it to be durable, in order for it to last decades, you really need to use the great base material for that cement layer. And uh, there, there's, a, there's a lot of people that choose different options. I've seen uh, folks use anything from old bob wire to putting it in there, which just is is uh is awful uh or uh, or a lot of times that they'll go to the local hardware store to uh to buy their their base material and end up with some kind of uh fencing or uh rabbit wire or uh or some kind of uh various farm products uh in order to put it up and the problem with it is it it, it doesn't work well uh, you can make it work, and uh, but the the finished result is that frequently uh, you get uh, you get there's a lot of problems with it over time. And uh, if you're if you're watching somebody's video or you're reading somebody's book or you're you're out seeing, all you got to do is look closely at the chink jobs they do, and you'll see them pulling away drastically away from the logs. You'll see them patched. You'll see some not hairline cracks, but major cracks uh, in their work. And that's what I've observed is whenever I've, I've uh, been around log cabins that have been chinked with anything other than diamond mesh plaster lathing, uh, that I've seen them all fail, uh, either fail immediately or fail within a matter of a couple of years, at least fail to the point that they're allowing water in and they don't look attractive and then failing completely over time. So the, the way that I learned how to do the way, the way I learned to recommend things to you, the way I learned how to do things for myself and for the clients I work for uh, is, is A, that I've observed what other people are doing and the long-term results of that. I've been around thousands of log cabins and I've seen what holds up best. And I have uh, taken this and I've taken this, the skills of all the various trades, learned from them, learned, learned how to do things best and uh, and the chinking that I applied over 30 years ago, and I know chinking now that's been done 50 years ago, uh, that there's no issues with it so ever. So if you've got a long-term track record of what works 
you really stick with that and if you see someone recommending something kind of hobby that this is what they do uh, but they don't have any long-term experience of it um, and you see problems with it you know that's that's an issue so when you want to chink when you want to apply a quarter inch of cement material to it uh, who better to learn from than individuals that do this for a living uh, not just build log cabins and chink like I do, but the people that, that apply plaster for a living. What, what do they use? And they don't use rabbit wire or, or fencing or bob wire. They use uh, diamond mesh plaster lathing. Uh, it's, it's available anywhere. Um, and uh, I, I, I can get it at my local building supply center. It comes in sheets. Generally, it's about two feet by eight feet. Uh, it's reasonably priced, it cuts really well, it holds up long term, and it's designed exactly right in order for the, the spaces between are not too big, that, uh, that uh, cement will fall through or cement will crack. Uh, there's exactly the right amount of spacing involved in diamond mesh lathing in order to best preserve um, and cement and uh, give it just amount of, 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 uh, of metal reinforcement to it so it becomes properly strong. You know, whenever you're building a skyscraper or a cement slab or whatever else, concrete of itself doesn't have a whole lot of strength when it gets large, that there's a lot of iron or, or steel that needs to be mixed into the, uh, to the structure in order to, the two together make it really strong. And that's what this does, and it allows the cement to penetrate through and actually wrap around and bond to it so they actually become a, a one layer effect uh, and uh, and they're easy to nail and put into place and it uh, and between that and the cement you've got plenty of room in order to do uh, your insulation so this is by far uh, the best material uh, based upon craftsmen based upon experience and uh, don't be tempted to use anything other than diamond mesh plaster lathing. And the reason why they probably call it diamond mesh is that if you see the little shapes on it, uh, you can see that, uh, that they look like little diamonds. And uh, the, only, the only downside to this, it's, it's reasonably priced, it's easily available. The only downside is that any fresh cuts that you make with your snips are pretty sharp. So you want to be really careful about that. Uh, but stick with the, stick with the best. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. We look forward to seeing you next week on Handmade House TV. I'm Noah Bradley, and I thank you for all of your uh, kind comments and for subscribing to my channel. You guys take care. Bye now.